So for today's video, I'm going to be going over my August wrap up, all the books that I read and or DNF'd in the month of August. And August was kind of an up and down month. I had a, a bunch of DNFs, but I also had a bunch of five star rereads and five star brand new favorites. And so yeah, that's what we're going to be chatting about here. And my apologies for not releasing some videos the last couple of weeks. Uh, work has been quite busy for me and it's hard for me to balance work, reading, and filming. Usually one of them suffers when I have to work. So I, you know, it's usually filming that I stop because I love to read, obviously. So, but I have two days off in a row now. I'm filming this on the 1st of September. So yeah, you know what? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. So let's just get these DNFs out of the way. Um, the first one, sadly, that I'm going to be DNFing is The Burning White by Brent Weeks. And we did a read-along for this over on the Book of Stormer Discord. Most of the people who read this series ended up really enjoying it. And you know what? It started off great. It was just one of those things where I really liked book one. But then the books, for whatever reason, just kept getting worse and worse. The first three books were like four stars. The first one was still my favorite. And then book four was definitely my least favorite um, of the ones that I finished. Uh, it was three and a half stars, and there were some reveals that I really didn't enjoy. And then book five, of course, is double the length of book four. It was like a 40-hour audiobook. I got maybe, I don't know, like 10 hours in, and I just realized I don't care what's happening. So I really didn't feel the need to finish a book it's such a long book that I really didn't care about the outcome. So sadly enough, I did DNF it. It wasn't terrible, but I just, I had zero motivation to read it. And I had so much more that I wanted to get to. So sadly, I DNF'd it. It's definitely, I, I, even if I did push through it, I knew it was not going to be a new favorite. So yeah, The Burning White, definitely not my favorite. I did not finish it. I also DNF'd Seven Deadly Wonders by Matthew Riley. And this was a book that uh, a good buddy on the Discord, Fury, uh, basically forced me to read because he won the random number generator. And this was the book that he really wanted me to read. It's the first book in a seven book series. It's like Seven Deadly Wonders, six something, five something. Uh, it it's definitely reads like an action movie. And I wish I knew that going into it because I really, I, I don't typically love action movies and just like stuff that's just more about like the, the explosions and like the excitement of everything going on. And I don't know, this book just felt like an action movie and I, I gave it a fair chance. Like I got like about halfway through like 250 pages and it wasn't bad. I was just very bored. It was just these people going around trying to find secret artifacts and like this ancient prophecy with involving the pyramids. And meanwhile, the characters were just kind of flat and dull and the dialogue wasn't very good. I don't know. It's just not a Jake book. It's not a Jake book. I gave it a fair shot and I, I just, I knew if I forced myself to finish it, I wasn't going to enjoy it. So... I DNF'd it halfway through, not terrible, but definitely not my kind of book. And the other book that I DNF'd, maybe temporarily, maybe I'll go back and try to read it. Uh, it's sad to say though, because I thought I was actually going to enjoy this book. It's called What Is Not Yours Is Not Yours by Helen Oyayimi. And I enjoyed this author's, one of this author's other books, Mr. Fox. I gave that one four stars. That one was a very weird kind of short story collection that I don't know. It's, it's very weird. <laughs> very hard to describe that book, but I really enjoyed it. And this one's another short story collection. I thought I would enjoy it, but man, I was just so bored. I, I started one of the short stories, got super bored with it, DNF'd it, and then moved on to the other one. Got bored very quickly with that one, DNF'd it. So I was just like, you know what? Maybe this collection is not for me. Um, I, I'm, I'm tempted to try some of her other books. Maybe this one's just a dud for me. Because again, I really liked Mr. Fox. But this one, I, I might just permanently DNF it. I don't know. I don't know. But I really didn't like it when I tried it a couple weeks ago. 
And the book that we read for Throw Chill or Kill Book Club for the month of August was What Have You Done by Cherie Lapina. And I enjoyed this one like I enjoy most of her books. I have, I've read a bunch, uh, actually I've read all of her books. None of them are bad. Some of them are just kind of meh. This one was good. Gave it three and a half stars. The initial premise and setup was intriguing. Uh, there was something that the author was doing. I don't want to get into spoilers, but I was hoping it was going to be one thing, but then you figure out what it is at the end of the book, and I didn't really like it that much. Also, just the mystery aspect and then the reveal of, like, what's going on. It, I don't know. It just I wasn't as engrossed as the book that she released last year. I don't remember what it was called. Uh, or... Well, what was it called? Everyone Here is Lying. That book was superb. I gave that one four and a half stars. Super engrossed into that book. But this book, What Have You Done? Meh. <laughs> it was good. It was readable like all of her other books. But, you know, it's n nothing special. So I gave it three and a half stars. And I was a little behind on our Harry Potter read-along that we started back in March. I was supposed to read book five in July, but I didn't get to it because of reasons. Uh, but yeah, I did read book five, and I read book six in August, which was the month we were supposed to read it in. And book five was the interesting one for me, because I read this as an adult for the first time. I never read this as a kid. I read this like 10 years ago when I was in college, and I really didn't like it. But this time around, second time around, I really enjoyed it. I, I, I gave it four and a half stars. I thought the story was engrossing. I thought the characters were great. Kind of my one gripe with this book is that one of my favorite characters, Hagrid, doesn't really show up until like halfway through. He's my favorite character, so that was a bit of a letdown. But other than that, it was really good. I thought there was going to be way more like like whiny YA stuff that I typically don't like, but it wasn't as bad as I was anticipating. So, But yeah, it was really good. It's also probably one of the books that I remember the least. Uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. It's definitely one that I'm going to look forward to getting to whenever I decide to reread the series again way down the road. But yeah, this was a pleasant surprise. And then book six, uh, Half-Blood Prince. Uh, book five was Order of the Phoenix. Half-Blood Prince. Uh, this one I read again in college for the first time, and I loved this book. I gave it five stars. I thought it was excellent. This time around, though, I actually bumped it down a little bit. I gave it four and a half stars. And that's kind of the theme uh, for these longer books. Uh, the first three books, I ended up giving five stars on a reread. Books four, five, and six, I gave four and a half stars, mainly because of the length and some YA stuff that I'm not the biggest fan of. There's a lot more of that in here <laughs> than I remembered when I was, maybe I was just more forgiving as a college student, but the good God, there's so much snogging in this book. I hate that word, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's still really good. And probably my favorite chunk of the book is the last hundred pages. Very tense, very good writing. And just the climax of the book is really good and worth reading. But yeah, overall, very good. The mystery aspect is top notch. And yeah, it's still one of my favorites, but yeah some YA stuff really brought it down for me. But yeah, so that's Harry Potter. And then we're going to, of course, read the seventh book in September, the finale. So definitely looking forward to that. We also read The Martian Chronicles for the Ray Bradbury Book Club. And this one I remember reading and it wasn't really one of my all-time favorites by Ray Bradbury. I kind of saved that for like Fahrenheit 451, The Illustrated Man, The October Country. Like those are really good. This one was pretty good, and I thought the same. The same. <laughs> I thought the same thing upon a reread. Solid four star collection. It's kind of a fix up novel where like it is a collection of short stories, but they're told in chronological order. So there is kind of a story to it, if you can call it that. It's really good. It's about humans colonizing Mars, and they're getting there, and then they're figuring out what's going on. It's definitely dated because, you know, there's it's from the 50s, but it's really good. Solid four-star collection, and I'm glad a lot of people got along with it for the Ray Bradbury Book Club. Uh, the next book that we're doing is Driving Blind in September, which 
is kind of a more obscure Bradbury collection, but I remember really enjoying it, so definitely check out that. But yeah, Martian Chronicles, solid four-star collection. Another reread, which I was definitely looking forward to because it's my second favorite series of all time, is of course Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson, the second book in the Stormlight Archive. And this is definitely my second favorite Stormlight book. My first is still always going to be The Way of Kings. Such a fantastic entry to a fantastic fantasy world. Uh, but yeah, this book, it, it just continues with it and the characters, you learn more about them, especially a certain character. I don't want to give spoilers, but it's so good. Like, what can I say about Stormlight that hasn't already been said? I think this is the third time, maybe the fourth time I've read this book. It, and it's funny, too, because, like, you, you, you read it and then you kind of forget. You, you, you remember the big things, but then there's small details that you don't remember. And you're reading it and you're like, oh, oh yeah, I forgot that happened. Crap. <laughs> that happened to me in this book where, you know, Kaladin, I can probably say his name. Uh, he kind of figures out something about another character. And then he's like, oh, and I forgot about that. And I was like, oh, yeah, crap. <laughs> but yeah. It's always fun to revisit these books because they're so long. It's hard to remember everything that happens in these books. So it's always a fun reread. And of course, I'm trying to reread all of the books in anticipation for book five coming out in December. I'm definitely going to devour that book when it comes out. But yeah, I had a fantastic time with Words of Radiance. Uh, three stars. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Five stars. And then uh, one of my most anticipated books books of the year is the sequel to Baby Teeth, which I reread again. I think this is the third time I've read this book. Five stars, one of my all-time favorite horror books and just favorite books in general about basically a seven-year-old girl who wants to hurt and possibly kill her mother. Very good. And Zoe Stage is just fantastic. I love all her books. And why don't you know what? She wrote a sequel to Baby Teeth called Dear Hannah. And big shout out to Ian, who gifted this book to me and Stacy, although it came a week late and we had already read it by then. <laughs> but thank you nonetheless. Um, I'm still glad to have the physical copy. But anyway, you're probably curious about what I thought about the sequel. And I loved it. One of my favorite books of the year. Probably right now it's sitting at maybe my first, but probably my second favorite book of the year. Still behind... Just Like Home by Sarah Gailey, which is impressive because, man, that book is so weird, but it's so good. But yeah, Dear Hannah, a, a very competent sequel to Baby Teeth. I still like Baby Teeth more, but this book, and of course I can't really get into spoilers, but basically you follow the events of Hannah's life as uh, an adult and you see how her thought process works as an adult it's very creepy and just to see her in more of a domestic setting after you know about her childhood and there's like hints of like what goes on after the events of baby teeth kind of sprinkled out and you're trying to learn more about that while creepy stuff is happening with her as an adult it's so good and my i guess a minor spoiler she does leave it room open for another possible sequel which I want to read right now <laughs> but yeah just know that Dear Hannah fantastic sequel uh, a few people read this book and they really enjoyed it but they, they liked Baby Teeth more obviously and they gave this book more four stars I think three people read this and they gave it four stars of course you know Zoe Stage it's hard for me not to give one of her books five stars but man Dear Hannah, it was so good. Definitely one of my favorite books of the year. Fantastic. I also read my Patreon pick of the of the month of August, which was picked by Bran. Uh, and the book that he wanted me to read was Between Two Fires by Christopher Bullman, or Buhlman, however you say that. And this, this is definitely one of my favorite covers. Uh, sadly to say, though, I'm probably not going to keep this book. Uh, I didn't hate this book by any means, but... I didn't love it either. I gave it three stars. I definitely liked it more than his other book, Black Tongue Thief, but I kind of had similar issues. It was definitely more magnified in Black Tongue Thief, but it was still kind of the same complaints where 
I don't know, the pacing is kind of wonky where there's a lot of meandering. Like you, you kind of get like a premise of like what they're doing, but like the journey to get there just feels very meandering. And also the characters I wasn't really a big fan of, especially there's there's kind of two main characters. There's like an, an older kind of gruff guy, just rough and just like, you know, he's he's had a tortured past and you know he's not a very a, kind of a morally great character and then there's this little girl who is super annoying <laughs> I, i'm sure people really like her but every time we got dialogue with her i was just like like nails on a chalkboard <laughs> i really didn't like her and uh, admittedly there are some cool stuff in here there's some cool monsters um but i don't know it also i'm not the biggest fan of historical fantasy and historical fiction and this takes place in real life in the 1300s during the Black Plague, uh, I think in France, or like they're on their way to Paris in France or whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I have a hard time suspending my disbelief when it like, like stuff, like fantastical stuff is happening on Earth. Normally, I kind of have a hard time suspending my disbelief for stories like this. So that in and of itself you know, kind of leads to my lower rating. Not a bad book by any means. I read it pretty quickly. I was somewhat interested to find out what happened. Uh, the ending was kind of weird. I wasn't totally sure what happened. Uh, but yeah, overall, definitely not a new favorite. I probably won't be reading any more Christopher B Bowman. Uh, but yeah, not a terrible book, but definitely not a Jake book. Sorry, Bran. And then I had two more books that I really wanted to get to in August, but work got very busy and you know like I'm a postal worker and like it's super hot out in August and when I get home I just have very low energy to do anything I, I normally just go home and watch YouTube and if, if I were to put an audiobook on or something I would probably just fall asleep very quickly so I wanted to read Age of War which I didn't get to which I'm going to have to read in September and then like I said I'm filming this September 1st and I just finished the the other book that I wanted to finish in August, All the Sinners Bleed by S.A. Cosby. One of my all-time new favorite authors, and he's going to get bumped up because of this book because I gave it five stars. Yes, another five-star favorite. And also a new release. I've had a lot of really good five-star new release books, and this is definitely one of them. Definitely one of my favorite books I've read all year. I think I still love... His other book, Blacktop Wasteland, just a bit more, but this one, or this one is definitely my second favorite of the four books that I've read by him. I think we go Blacktop Wasteland, All the Sinners Bleed, Razorblade Tears, and then My Darkest Prayer at the bottom. They're all great books though, but this one just had me on the edge of my seat. The characters, as always, were fantastic. The initial premise was just so dark and man, the, the, this book goes places and it also has kind of the inner battle of, you know, uh, uh, faith and religion and you have a main character who's really battling, struggling with people all around him being religious and him not really so much. And I really, you know, I, I really enjoyed that. Um, but yeah, this book was so good. And the ending was great. I just finished it. And yeah, it was fantastic. Um, definitely check it out if you're an S.A. Cosby fan. But yeah, definitely one of my favorite books uh, of the year. And uh, not my favorite of the month because Dear Hannah was just top notch. But man, I'm glad to keep getting some more five-star reads. I was, I was on the struggle bus for most of the year. But yeah, another five-star read. And yeah, this book was amazing. I can't wait to check out more from S.A. Cosby, although I think I've read all of his novels that have been released. I'm just going to have to wait for more to come out. I think he's going to be writing, uh, maybe not a sequel, but a companion novel to Lisa Jewell's book, Breaking the Dark, which came out earlier this year. I also gave five stars. He's going to be writing a Luke Cage Marvel novel. And I was very reluctant with... Um, Lisa Jewell's Breaking the Dark. I was like, I love Lisa Jewell, but it's Marvel, which I'm not a big fan of. 
but I still loved it and gave it five stars. So I'm definitely anticipating S.A. Cosby. Like, I'm, I'm definitely more intrigued with it now. I don't really, like, again, not a big Marvel fan. I know, like, Luke Cage is mentioned a little bit in Breaking the Dark. Uh, so I know a little bit about him, but I don't really know too much. But, I'm, but I, I have a lot of faith that S.A. Cosby is going to do the character justice. So very excited. But yeah, All the Sinners Bleed, five stars, excellent. All right, that is my August wrap-up. All of the books that I managed to read and or DNF in the month of August. So like I said, I had three DNFs, which is a lot for me in one month. Usually, typically I'll have like one DNF, like a, I'm reading a book and I'm just not feeling it. But three is quite a bit. Um, but I also had a bunch of five stars. Uh, two of them were new to me, like new release books that I, well, actually no, wait, All the Sinners Bleed came out last year. It's new to me. <laughs> this is what I'm trying to say. But yeah, um, Dear Hannah, fantastic. All the Sinners Bleed, fantastic. Of course, I had my Words of Radiance reread, which was always going to get five stars. Baby Teeth, obviously, was going to get five stars. Uh, both Harry Potter books that I read were obviously fantastic, but four and a half stars, solid reads. Martian Chronicles, four star reread. What have you done, Cherry Lupina? Three and a half, uh, it was decent. Uh, and then Between Two Fires, three stars, not a new favorite. Uh, and then I wanted to get to Age of War, uh, but I ran out of time because of work stuff. But it's going to be the first book that I pick up in September. And like I said, I'm filming this September 1st, so I'm probably going to be starting it tonight, which, which might mean I'm going to fall a bit behind of all the books that I wanted to get to in September, which that video will come out soon. My September TBR, I don't know if I'll get to all of those books now because I have to add another book to it, but we'll see. But anyway, definitely let me know what you thought of the books that I read in August. Let me know if you've read them and what you thought about them. And also what were your favorite books that you read in the month of August? I'd love to chat with you down in the comments below. And also, uh, I, I don't think I mentioned it in any of my videos, but I just hit 2K subs. Woohoo! Uh, I will eventually do something uh, in celebration for that, like make a 2K celebration video. Uh, I will possibly do a book giveaway and I will eventually do a live stream with y'all uh, where I do like a Q&A, like you guys can prepare questions in like my video and then that stream, I'll be answering some questions and y'all can ask some questions in that in that live stream. And I'll, it'll be a fun time. But yeah, 2K subs. I, I thought I would be hitting this milestone towards the end of this year, like maybe November, but it's already happened and I could not be more excited. And thank you guys so much for continuing to support the channel and watching my silly videos. Thank you so much. And with that said, Thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, you guys know the drill. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Also, uh, Patreon and Amazon wishlist down below, and Bookish Drummer Discord, where we've got so much stuff happening. A uh, uh, Harry Potter read along is going to end. Uh, Legends of the First Empire still going strong. Ray Bradbury Book Club. Uh, we're going to be starting. The Stephen King Book Club in October, starting with Under the Dome, Throw Chill or Kill, Patreon. Like, we've, we've got so much stuff happening. So, join us for any of that stuff. And again, thank you guys so much and have a fantastic day.